So I've been wanting to build a tray for this ute for ages now, but I A, haven't had the motivation, B, haven't had the time, but so far I've got motivation, no time. Let's see how we go. So I've always wanted to make a tray for this ute. Just wanted to make it just a little bit narrower, a little bit shorter. Wanted to um, sort of cut off the edge sides. I think they call it dovetailing, I'm not quite sure. Just um, have the tail lights nice and recessed in so when I back it into banks and do stupid stuff, I don't bend lights and break lights all the time. I'm gonna have um, little tray sliders around the side and hopefully, yeah, hopefully it looks the part and stays up to the test of um, silly activities. Let's see if we can um, turn some pieces of metal into um, what resembles a tray. <laughs> How hard can it be? So I hit up a mate at a local steel supplier. Um, thanks Ethan. <laughs> Gave us a hook up here so we got some bits and pieces. I um, sat down and worked out kind of what I needed on paper. I roughly made um, some measurements and things and a bit of a mock-up drawing and got some um, a bit of a cutting list of what they call it. So fingers crossed that's all I really need besides that tail lights and a sheet. Um, and then yeah Turn it into one of them. So I started off just doing some basic sketching. It was quite easy to make actually um, the tray that I wanted to build to, to scale. So that's sort of one tenth what it should be. Everything's all pretty easy. So when I wanted to work out how much steel I needed, basically just measured it. Um, with, with it being one tenth scale, it was really easy to figure out my lengths and things. So just done some drawings, give me a bit of an idea of how it would all look. Come up with a result that I'm pretty happy with. Made a bit of a cutting list. This isn't actually complete, there's a few more lines down here that I um, ended up getting as extras but that gave me a bit of an idea of what I needed worked out widths of the cab and widths of the train where I wanted everything making sure it would all cover the tyres so it gave me a bit of an idea there so what I'm going to do is just basically lay everything under the grass to make sure I've got a, everything I need and then um, yeah start making some measurements and cutting things up and hopefully weld myself together all the bits too I've got are 3mm so I went 3mm 50 by 50 3mm 75 by 50 um, and this big dog over here, it's 3 mil 150 by 50. That's going to be my um, spacer basically between the chassis towers or the tray towers, whatever you want to call them, to the tray. So, uh, oh, and 32 NB for tray sliders, just medium wall. No idea how thick medium wall is, but it's about, about that thick. I got these bits, which I got the wrong bit because I'm a spud. I think I got 40 NB instead of 32 NB. That's all right. I'll go swap them out for the ones I need. So I've laid it all out on the ground to give me a bit of an idea of how everything's going to go together. So this is going to be my headboard. Um, it's all going to be like the flat section here. It's going to be upright tunk, there. Um, turn that into a bit of a headboard sort of arrangement. That's obviously just the flat tray section, tray sliders. I'm going to fold up this section at the back here. I'm going to turn that into my tail light number plate arrangement. But yeah, seems that I've got everything I need. So I've just laid out the basic shape of what it's all going to look like to try and work out my spacing for the um, little tray supports. Also just put my spare um, in the mix as well just to try and work out distance between these two for when it's um, all flexed up and up into the guard. So I don't want um, the tyre striking any of these supports and rubbing so hopefully that's in the right spot there. Looks to be enough clearance either side. I start welding things together and seeing if I can make it a, a big blue square.
basic sort of shape of what it's going to be. Um, it's actually square somehow too. I don't know how I managed to work that out, but I have fluked it. Now I'm just going to try and work out um, what I'm going to do with these rear sections. I'm going to try and get a bit of a um, that dovetail sort of shape going on it, which would be kind of cool. So I'm going to have a bit of a play around and see if I can get this 50 by 50 to butt up against the 75 by 50. Um, it's sort of a bit of a bit of an angle like that, and then uh, continue another angle there across and then back again. So this section in here, from here to here, I might actually miter that joint. Never done that before, but that'd be kind of cool. See if we can work that out. But this one here might be pretty easy. I reckon I'll just lock a bit off the end there to butt it up um, and build an end plate just to fill that hollow section in there. Give it a bit of strength and make it all um, all neat and tidy. So I've got this fancy thing from Bunnings. It's like a digital angle gauge or angleometer. I don't know what the hell you call them. But it's pretty thick. You just loosen this little dial here and you can just adjust your um, angles that you want to measure. Super handy. So I've got um, the distance, or well, I've got the angle that I wanted there, marked it up on the machine. So I'll cold cut on this drop saw and hopefully that'll be close to what I want it to be. Ah, check that out. Actually works. Sick. Good little investment that one. So now I've got that um, angle cut there. Fits in there the way I wanted it. I've measured out the distance that I need for the little tail light recess. And now I need to do a miter join or miter cut or whatever you call it to make this section here go back along to meet up with the other side. So the angle there that's required is 15 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark just a straight line down the middle to mark a, um, a bit of a reference point. Then seven and a half degrees each side of that. I'll make two lines going from the center V'ing out slightly. Cut both of those and then once I close the gap up, I should have my 15 degree bend, hopefully. So I just um, smack two tacks in there for now, just to hold it. So it's um, bang on 15 degrees. So now what I'll do is I'll just come to this end, work out where I'm gonna cut my angle there, work out where I'm gonna um, do the other minor joint, and then I'll have a rear section. So I've got this corner cut, that angle is all set up, that angle is all set up. Now I just got to work out where I'm going to chop this one off here. So I'm just going to get the Nico, do a little line underneath, give it a chop and hopefully that fits. Well it actually fits pretty good. All the angles seem right, pretty snug at each end. So I'll fill in these welds later on when I weld out the rest of it, but for now I'll just tack the sides, keep it all in place. That'll stop anything from moving. And then um, on to the next step. So I've just um, flipped the tray that's onto its side now. I'm going to start um, welding out just these corners down here. Then I'll flip it over, weld up this side. Um, just basically put it on all four different angles to get all my welds sorted. That way this um, main shape can stay the shape of this and it won't warp or do anything weird as I wrestle it around and try and get it on my tray to work out a few more measurements and things and then um, I've got to start on some mounts and work out how to mount it to the tray then. Then somehow work on getting this friggin' thing off. Not really sure how to do that yet. Got a little bit of an issue over here. I um <laughs> I bug it up and ordered the wrong bit so I'm currently waiting for some knuckle studs at the moment. I ordered some ARP ones, some pretty flash ones, but I ordered the friggin' hub studs instead. So anyway, I got upgraded hub studs hub hub studs now, even though I didn't need them, but waiting on some ARP ones, because this friggin' thing snapped. So once I get them, I can move the ute to somewhere where I can get the tray off, and then put that on there, 
work out the headboard and stuff, but for now I'm just guessing. <laughs> So I've got all corners welded, or all sides welded besides the top bits. Um, these turned out great, these bloody things, so I'll give that a bit of a sand up. And then um, make it all look pretty, like it's one piece. But now I'm going to try and work out some tray mounts for underneath it, and then get to the stage where I can pretty much lift it on the ute, and then, then the exciting bit is mocking up the headboard, and then once it's on the ute I can mock up the uh, rest of the tail light sort of section and then we're getting close to it looking like a real tray this is sick now i've just worked out my tray mounts i'm just going to go basically from this to here uh, for the front two 50 by 50 rhs three mil again and then for the rear section uh, the tray mounts basically dead in here in the middle of those so same deal um, 150 by 50 box just across here about 300 mil long, about 800 ish for the front. I've got some gal stuff, that's actually all I had, but it's gonna work get good anyway, because more than likely it's gonna remain open, so save it rusting out. Gal's probably the best. got my tray supports or mounts whatever you want to call them they're all cut up and ready to go I'm gonna do some angled brackets just off here just down to give it some sort of side support as well in case I you know uh, put the car into a bank or anything well, not in case for for when I put the car into the bank um, say these sort of rolling over or getting squished and squashed out or whatever do that a bit later though I'll just weld them in place for now and I'll flip the tray over and start to work on this little tail light section they'll give me some measurements as well for um, some sheets and things I need to order later and I'll get back around to bracing these up a little bit later. There we go, the tray mounts all fully welded out. All um, four corners around them, get them as strong as I can I guess. And then um, I worry about bracing it later once it's actually on the ute in case there's something underneath the um, tray that's going to get in the way. Like I'm going to fit the water tank in this section here. So I'll have to work out where I can put the bracing. Same with the rear. But I reckon that might do us for today. I'll have a crack tomorrow and see if I can get this um, tail light section fabbed up. And then yeah, eventually we'll get the parts for this thing. So I can put a wheel on it. And then, um, yeah, take a little drive to um, a yard where I can forklift the tray off and then hopefully put that big blue square piece of steel on it and, and uh, hopefully it fits. Well, we're back into it again. Today we're gonna try and fabricate up this rear tail light section. I'll make this little top section. Stick it on, get my angles right and try and work out what I'm gonna do with this little corner tail light section here. And I've gotta make, um, obviously, it up to about this section here so I don't see my tray mount. So I'll have to raise it up 150 mil or something, but I'll make that work. What are you doing, mate? A fluffy apprentice. these tail light sections are all just sort of sitting loosely in place just held in by the magnets at the moment to give me a bit of a idea of the height and what I need them at um, now I'm basically 
just getting my angle here for this little rail which I'll transfer onto this section which will be my rear piece it'll just sit in there like that just recessed and that'll um, finish up the tail section all these RHS and SHS sections have like a little seam on them which you can just see in here if I can get the camera to focus and that seam when you paint it it shows up so you want to have that seam towards the back you don't want to have it visible because when you do paint it it ends up looking like this and every time you look at it it annoys the absolute crap out of you so pro tip Cool, so there we go. That back section's all together now, which is kind of sweet. What I'll do is race around using this little device here. I'm gonna just make sure that everything is the same level, which is pretty good. Finish off welding around. seems like it's like an unwritten rule that every time I try and do any sort of fabrication it starts piercing down rain. I had to hack up for a bit here, everything started to get bloody wet, benches all got wet, trays getting all rained on, even though we got a roof over here. Rain was like coming in bloody sideways across here for a sec, but anyway, what I'm gonna do now, I got this little bizzo while I was out, waiting for the rain to clear. Oh this little orbital sheet sander thingo. I'm gonna chuck some sandpaper in it and um, yeah, to start smoothing out these, make it all look nice and flush, and then um, I reckon that'll do it for today and I'll get back into it tomorrow. Got a little cheap orbital for Bunnings, got some sandy pad things. Basically, just gonna go over it, make all this nice and smooth, have it a little bit of a go at it last night, but <laughs> in my rush, um, I actually put the left side on the right side and the right side on the left side. So now, like I was saying not to do, I got this bloody seam and when I paint it, it'll annoy the shit out of me. So I'll, um, yeah, I'm not gonna unstitch it, I'm not gonna unweld it and cut it out, whatever, so I'll just get the sander and I'll just sander that all flat so that all looks nice and pretty. But um, that's this morning's little mission. Let's get stuck into it again. Given these a bit of a sand down, they're looking better. Pretty smooth now. I'll um, hit them a bit more when I get it back up on the ute. Finally, it's a little bit higher, then I can work on it a bit easier. But now I'm just going to try and work out what to do with these corners. Um, it's kind of been putting it off because I'm not really sure what the best way of approaching it is. But what I was thinking is I was just going to get the grinder and just lop it off, try and get this section here as flush as um, I can with this part. Then I'll just make a little square that sits in there, I weld it up, um, and then hopefully, with a lot of this machine and a lot of that machine, I can get it to um, just look nice and flush and smooth, is the plan. Well, yeah, see how it goes. A bit of a time consuming exercise, but it's gotta be done. It looks looks pretty weird look that, so, like that, so. Well, see what we can do. See if we can make it pretty. I've just got a bit of a rusty off cut of something. I'm gonna get the right shape, cut the square out, and then um, basically recess it so that's flush in there, weld around the edges, and then yeah, cap that off. Should work, should work good. Bit overkill, but at least it'll be strong. So I've got my little piece in there, it doesn't fit too, too bad. I can get it nice and 
nice and flush. I'll just tack it in place, double check it, and then weld it out, grind it back, smooth it off, and then do the other side. There you go, it's turning out pretty good. Not too bad. Once again, once I get it on the back of the ute, I'll be able to have a better angle at it and I'll um, try and get it a little bit better again, but it's coming along good. Now to um, do, the other, do the other side. I won't bother filming it because you've seen one side. Don't need to see it again. Now what I'm going to do, because it keeps raining off and on, while it's not raining, I'm just going to go around with this, just tidy up all my little welds, and then I'm going to give them a bit of a coat with um, just one of these, not really sure what's better yet, whether I'm going to use this Inkit or the Galmax, they both look like pretty good products, I've used this one in the past before, it's been alright, never used this stuff before, but I'll read the can and see which one can persuade me which one to use, and then I'll yeah, touch up all the welds, all the joints, that way it's sealed and at least if it keeps getting rained on, it's not going to um, make it harder for me to paint down the track. Cool, so I went for a drive, got me sheets, hopefully two sheets here. The remainder of one of the sheets can be for the back and then the other clean sheet I'll use the entire thing for guards and the headboard. Rear sheet uh, first. Basically, it's got it joined up just in the center of a 50 by 50, so I can weld the two sheets together. I'll make the front one last, but now all I'm going to do is get a Nico and then just um, draw my line as a bit of a um, cutting template along the back there to get the shape, get the grinder back out again, and chop it into the shape I need. Got me top two sheets cut for the um, the front and the rear. That's all sorted, and I build up my tail light section and the number plate section, just off some off cuts, and then uh, I'll weld those in. So I'm going to leave the top tray sections off. I won't weld them on for now. I'm just going to um, basically keep it as light as I can, so I can lift it onto the ute when I get that back in one piece. So on to making some tail light filling things. Yeah. These the sheets are cut up, they're all good to go. Not the um, best shape, but they fit in there nice and cover up that little hole, so best I could do with some off cuts. I'll um, just give them, give them a quick little spray with some weld through primer, that way the section that's up against here isn't just raw, so if moisture gets in it doesn't leach out rust, so give it a quick spray, wait for it to dry, and then I'll um, weld them on. There 
go, rear section's all welded in. All looks apart now. What I'll do tomorrow, when I get a bit more time, I'll uh, drill the holes, mount up the tail lights, just so that way the holes are there and it's, I don't have to drill through um, fresh paint once I paint it. Put some stitches on the back for now. I reckon that's what's gonna really gonna need. I'll just um, clean them up and paint them when it all cools down, but that'll, that'll do for today. So, tray's on, a few little oversights however, I'm going to have to um, trim this little mount here so we see that doesn't touch the chassis, that'll be easy, just buddy, lop it down like that, that'll sort that problem out, um, I'm going to have to weld my other tray mount on because it was broken, um, that's not going to be a big deal, let's weld the top back on that, but over here, something I didn't think about is the tail section hangs five or so mil um, lower than the actual chassis mount so I've got a gap here as that's touching hard on the chassis so I can either move it back a bit to clear but then um, I run out of length on the mounts which won't work and then the headboard distance is going to be too large so I'm going to have to space a tray up with something I'll just get some little poly um, wedges or something or little spaces I've got these which I made for the original tray that come off it just get a bit of extra height so maybe I can cut them in half into space to tray up a little bit. I didn't really want to, I wanted to have it nice and low. Um, it's already probably 20, 30 mil higher than the tray I had on it before, but I'm gonna have to if I wanna make that clear. I'll um, try and get just a tiny, tiny little gap out of it, but that might be a drama. I'll be able to sort that out. But still, happy, it's on. Happy with the width. Got a little bit of poke there, which I will, um, I'll be able to fill in with those um, with a 32 NB pipe along the side, has like a chassis, has like a um, tray slider, which would be sweet, and then the tube guards will cover up everything. But it's looking good. Getting closer. So, what I'm doing here, basically trying to get my headboard height worked out. So, I've got it so the band's going to start around about where that um, body line is. Just got a little um, angle gauge here again. Trying to work out the. Um, yeah, it's just like the headboard angle really. I'm thinking 18 degrees where that sets pretty much bang on the money. So I'll, um, yeah, mock this section up and see what it looks like. mocking up one side of the headboard I've got the two sides I uh, got them a nice little 90 with um, the flat bar in the bottom and now I'm just working at the top angle which is pretty easy the angle is 108 and then you just halve it so 54 here 54 here and it should by rights but up and be nice and flush here's the plan anyway and then um, I'll work out length later I'll just do one end to make sure that's gonna work then I'll try and get my uprights on each side, make sure I, that's actually the height that I want, and then, um, yeah, work out this top length, tack it in place, and then, uh, yeah, the headboard can be done for now. I'll actually get that 50 by 50 that's on the ground there. That'll go probably somewhere along here, and then I can sheet it, which will be the little sort of backboard protection thing for the cab or whatever. And then I'll just tack that in place. I won't actually weld it all properly until I get the tray back off again, so I don't wreck the paint on the ute and then I'll start moving on to some tray sliders. So I'm gonna get this part here, um, just gonna sort of get it flush with the magnet. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this little tool here. Basically I'll set it so you see the screen, it's at zero now, um, and it, 
just lets me know degrees. So what I'm going to do, because it's magnetic, I'm going to stick it on here, and then when I get this section, it's going to be a bit hard to do it one-handed and film, but I can actually get this piece here nice and level. Um, <laughs> hard to do it filming, but that'll make sure that that's um, flush and not um, on the piss. So the first attempt was a bit hard trying to hold it and steady it, but what I've done is I've got this here so I can get just a bit of a rough height so it doesn't drop down. Also got my little magnet in here to get it nice and flush or as flush as I can get it. And then, happy with it now, so that's dead level there and then I'll stick that on. Not too bad. I'll start placing some more tacks just to steady it because I've only just got one in there at the moment just holding it all together. But um, I'll run around with a few tacks and see if I can keep it straight. Sweet, so I got all the, um, well, two of those headboard pieces cut up. Um, I weld them on when it's all off the car, back on the ground. So for now, I've just taken them off, so it's less weight to lift. What I'm going to do now is try and work out my um, grub bars or brush bars or rock tray sliders, whatever you want to call them. Basically, just going to get a 90, um, 32 NB pipe, just fold it along. I'll uh, work out whether I can just use the 90 as it is or whether I need to trim a bit off the back to try and snug it in a little bit more to the tray but I kind of want to have the tyres completely covered up if I can. I'm playing around with this and see what I come up with. Do a little bit of a change of plan. Gonna have to speed up the process a little bit because crazy enough, I got a bit of an opportunity to get the Ute actually photographed in a magazine. So we're gonna speed up the process a bit because I'm running out of time to um, get this tray done. I've now got three days before it gets photos taken. So we're gonna get this Ute finished off, painted and prepped, and basically ready to go. So Wayne giving me a hand. The main priority is getting this Ute tray finished. So <laughs> we'll try and get it welded up this afternoon, painted tomorrow, and fitted the next day. Wish us luck. Cool, so U-tray's off again. Got these side rails just tacked in place. And then what we're gonna do now is just fab up this headboard, get that bit out of the way, and fully weld it. Now it's off the U.
there's um, a few things I would have done differently when I was um, building the tray. One massive thing is just time. It was a bit of a rush build. There's a lot of stuff I would have done a lot differently, a lot neater, um, including, you know, wouldn't have run my old guards. <laughs> I had to sort of just quickly chuck them in so they're just held in by some tech screws. Only three, so they're not even mounted properly, but just had to get them on for that. Um, the photos. Would have loved to um, have finished off the tube guards. I made a bit of a start down here, but um, didn't get very far, so I'll eventually um, finish them off. Throw these in the bin where they belong, and then, um, yeah, get the nice tube guards all tied into it. I would also add some more reinforcements just through here. Uh, maybe 300 mil or something, just like a bit of a flat bar or whatever, just to help keep that nice and strong. Um, I didn't even get a chance to wire up the lights properly, so I don't have reverse lights yet. So, got to wire up the reverse lights. <laughs> These aren't actually wired up yet. I've got to mount a spare tire somehow. It's just sitting there at the moment. I'm probably going to mount it something like that. Looks kind of cool. Bit of a bit of a lean. I've got my two boxes on at least, anyway. Space cases. Got that all nice and neat. Uh, still got to finish up my wiring, so light bars on top. Um, rock lights underneath it and stuff. I made a bit of a start on my 12 volt. So I got, um, when I'm gonna run my fridge off here, just my positive and earth. Um, wires as well as just a manual override. So I can link two batteries and a VSR. It's just tucked in there. Neat enough for now, but I've got to tidy up all that. They even started just mocking up where that water tank's gonna be. Just um, got it tucked away underneath the, um, underneath the tray there. Nice little neat spot for it. I think if I ever do another tray as well, I'll make a, um, just the headboard section a bit stronger too. I'd have a few reinforcements going down. Maybe another panel going from here across the bottom just to um, strengthen up a little bit too. Also, I only bloody um, I only put one coat of paint on it too. So I'd like to um, eventually take it off and give it like a proper paint job. I don't want to be one of those YouTuber people who is like, like, subscribe and whatever, but it actually helps heaps because, um, you know, it takes a lot of time to make these videos. Well, it takes longer for me anyway because I don't really know what I'm doing. Then it actually does to... Um, to make the tray, which is pretty crazy because a lot of time went into that as well. Anyway, sweet as. Catch us next time. <laughs>